collector your ultimate goal is likely to be able to acquire some of the vintage guitars and vintage amplifiers that many of the reissues and custom shops that we may currently own are replicating and among the most prestigious of all the electric guitars ever made is the 1959 les paul standard it's considered the pinnacle of all collectors' electric guitars and often can fetch upwards of 150 to 250,000, depending on the condition and perhaps the artist that maybe used it famously. But the guitar I want to showcase today checks a lot of these boxes. It's a vintage Gibson, it is a Les Paul, and it is from 1959. It is none other than the 1959 Les Paul. Junior double cutaway. Now I know maybe from the thumbnail or maybe the way that the lead in to this might have been, you were maybe expecting a, a 1959 Les Paul standard and this certainly is not it. But in terms of checking the boxes of it being an iconic instrument, of it having old wood, of it being extremely great sounding and resonant, it certainly checks all those boxes. And today I'm gonna showcase this amazing instrument, a lot of the things that it does and maybe not intimidate you quite as much around the idea of getting a vintage instrument. One of them being that if you're gonna go for an instrument like this and you're willing to go player grade, which this most certainly is, and we'll go through some of the things about this that are not original, that certainly knock the price down, these can be had very reasonably. Now, one of my good friends who has given me this guitar basically indefinitely on long-term loan only paid $1,200 for it. And it wasn't something that he got back in the 80s. This was something that he's gotten in the last 10 years. So although maybe this is extraordinarily low for a 1959 Les Paul Jr. double cutaway, it's certainly possible to get these sorts of deals if you're willing to sacrifice on a few things, things like original tuners, which this doesn't have, original bridge, which this doesn't have, but the important things are here. It has the original P90 pickup. It has been refretted at one point, but that's pretty standard for most of these sort of guitars. But I think the most consequential is that it has had a headstock break that was repaired, I would say, aesthetically not so nicely. Although as far as the tuning stability of this guitar, I haven't noticed any issue. And I've actually been using this guitar for several months now. And it is really absolutely amazing, not only in sound, not only in its tuning capability, but really in everything that it does. So let's dive into this guitar, the 1959 Les Paul Jr. double cutaway, and let's talk about the tones, some of the iconic players that have used instruments like this, and also maybe whether you want to go and check out an instrument like this that you can get for a significantly reduced price comparatively to what an actual 59 burst might cost, or even what this guitar in mint condition might cost. I have definitely seen these at guitar shows and other places going below $3,000, which if you're considering what the custom shop equivalent would be for something like this, it's almost the same price. So why not just go for the vintage guitar? It's gonna increase in value over time. And it's certainly not gonna be like the custom shop where you buy it and as soon as you take it out of the store, it's worth 30% less than you just paid for it, similarly to a new car. So the Les Paul Jr., I don't know a whole lot about the history of this guitar as far as the reason why somebody might buy it over another. I always presume that the reason was is that it was more abbreviated, maybe it's more of a student model. I always just saw these guitars used by guys like Keith Urban or Keith Richards. I also saw this used by the guys in 38 Special, and it got absolutely amazing sounds on those sort of records. I even think that Billy Joe Armstrong used a single cutaway version of this and also recorded iconic records like Dookie using that particular guitar and it absolutely sounded incredible. So I wanna walk through some of the tones that this guitar is capable of and I kind of see it as somebody, again, who's not a historian in Les Pauls, I kind of feel like it actually does the thing that a lot of people talk about in terms of an amazing Les Paul. A lot of people characterize an amazing Les Paul as kind of sounding like a super fat telly. And I think that this, although it doesn't have two pickups in order to go between a neck and a bridge, it kind of sounds like a really fat telly bridge pickup in a lot of things. And so I got a, a backing track from uh, from somebody, a fellow YouTuber who who creates backing tracks. I'll link the track in, in the 
in the description below that came up with a really cool kind of Keith Urban style um, track. And I'm just going to try soloing a little bit over it. The, the signal path is pretty simple. I'm just taking the guitar. I'm going straight into a 1996 Korg era Vox AC30. And then I'm gonna be taking a line out of that and I'm gonna be feeding a J Rocket Clockwork Delay and also a Polar Reverb, which is gonna be again after the microphone and the speaker. So it's not gonna be affecting any of the signal path of the dry signal of this going to the amp. This is just gonna be happening after, it's gonna be mixed in parallel. So you're gonna hear a little bit of delay and reverb processing on here, but again, that's happening after the mic and the speaker. So it shouldn't be affecting anything that the dry signal is doing. And I'm just gonna tap in a tempo that kind of syncs up with the actual song. So let's hear what this sounds like. I think you're gonna agree. It is a really fat, beefy telly sound. It's gonna to try to do some uh, lead work over it and let's let's see what happens. To my ear, maybe it didn't have quite the jangle of a telly, but it certainly had the fatness. And there are certain tellies that don't have as much jangle, especially the ones that are kind of later on in the 60s. So I can see why guys like Keith Urban would use a double cutaway Les Paul Jr. Uh, I think it can sound like a great rock and roll guitar. It can do a little bit of the twang of, of a Telecaster. And I don't know that he used it on this particular song uh, that the track is representative of, but I know that I've certainly seen him use this guitar in many live performances, and presumably it's made its way onto some of the actual recordings on his studio albums. So I, I get it. I get why he likes it, and it really sounds great for that context and that style. But now let's go to a totally dissimilar style from that with uh, Green Day's Dookie. And we know that Billy Joe Armstrong, the guitar player and lead singer of Green Day, used a single cut version of a Les Paul Jr. and absolutely had some amazing rock rhythm tones on the album Dookie. So uh, let's hear it again. I'm going to do the same setup this time. I'm still going to use the Vox AC30. I'm going to have a little bit of delay from the clockwork delay and a little bit of reverb from the player reverb. And again, that's coming after the mic and the amplifier done in a wet, dry, wet context. And those are going to be, you know, again, after everything in hard pan left and right for the processing separately from the dry guitar into the dry Vox AC30. Let's give it a listen. When I come So I think that that sounded absolutely killer. I thought it was really great for the the big power chords and uh, and really sounded fat and reminded me very much of what I would hear from a Les Paul. And so we've heard it with a couple of tracks and I think that that's good to to understand how it sounds in the context of of other instruments and uh, and that's you know valuable to kind of assess. But I want to play another piece that is indicative of what you would have heard a Les Paul Jr. used on another classic recording. Uh, 38 Special uh, was known to use these sorts of instruments and had some amazing hits in the 80s, had some amazing guitar solos and guitar tones. So I'm going to play a little 38 Special here, and it's just going to be without a track. You're just going to get to hear the instrument as it is and uh, be able to maybe discern a little bit more of how it sounds and, and again, a, a rhythm kind of tone, and then I'll break into a little lead to kind of finish it out. Uh, so let's listen to that, and let's uh, let's see what we think. <laughs>
again, I, you know, I feel like, again, this is just one pickup in the truth on this guitar, but it really does sound versatile. It sounds very dynamic. It's super touch responsive. It's really just whatever I'm doing with my right hand, it seems to just be able to bring that out. The sustain in the bloom is really amazing. I don't have any compression going on here at all. It's just whatever is naturally being produced between the guitar and the amplifier. Now I want to go with one more playing example. Uh, and this is going to be uh, a Keith Richards kind of lick, uh, start me up from Rolling Stones. And although I'm fairly certain that he used a telly to play that, Keith Richards is also known to use a double cutaway uh, Les Paul, just like this one. I'm going to stick with the same exact amp. I haven't even changed the settings on the amp the whole time. I've just kind of been using the, the guitar volume a little bit to kind of get some different sounds. So I'm going to actually roll it back a little bit just to clean it up slightly. And it's still going to be a little broken up, as you would hear on that song. And uh, I'm going to turn off the delay, but I'm still going to keep a little room reverb just for a little breath. So let's have a listen to that and let's uh, see what we think. <laughs> absolutely sounded close. Of course, I'm not playing it exactly like Keith Richards would. I'm not tuned as Keith Richards would have it, but I'm kind of doing, again, a, an amateur interpretation of a classic recording. Of course, you can always get yourself into trouble trying to do that. So again, an incredibly versatile guitar. This is probably one of the best buys that you can get as far as vintage Gibsons are concerned that are really excellent rock and roll machines that sound great, are versatile, and certainly have way more options beyond just what the single pickup, the volume and tone control would indicate. So I'm absolutely in love with this guitar. And again, I've had it on loan for some time now. And it sounds like I'm gonna be able to keep this thing indefinitely, or at least until it's reclaimed. Maybe after my friend sees this video, he's gonna want this guitar back. It sounds so absolutely amazing. But these deals are out there, and I highly recommend that if you have such an opportunity to maybe not go for the pinnacle, the 59 Les Paul standard, and maybe go for some of these pieces that are a little less desirable, that have some catastrophic breaks in the eyes of a collector, and that you can get some player grade that absolutely sounds amazing super versatile and is really going to be a great tone machine for you. If you enjoyed this video, I highly recommend that you like, you subscribe, you leave us a comment, tell me one of your favorite licks that I played using the 59 Les Paul Jr. Tell me what you think of some of the other iconic players that might have used this that I didn't name in this video, because certainly there are lots of iconic players that are users of the Les Paul Jr. I only named a few of them. Of course, some of them may be using double cuts like this. Some of them may be using single cuts. But the overall sound, I think, is pretty much in the same ballpark as far as what's achievable with those guitars. This has been an absolute blast to shoot this. It's been really cool to just kind of hear this in a lot of different contexts. It's been really eye-opening for me where I might actually gravitate toward this guitar in places where I might not formerly have thought to even use it instead of, say, a Tele or instead of a Les Paul, because man, just recorded, it sounds absolutely insanely good. Uh, I'm really blown away by what this is able to achieve. So definitely give some of these player grade, kind of non-desirable models a look if you're considering it or gonna shell out the money for a custom shop. This is certainly a great alternative way to go. So thanks again for watching. Until next time, I'm Mason Marangella from Vertex Effects, and this was taking a look at uh, my on loan 59 Les Paul Jr. See you later.